insane. Like, it felt like it was like, like, a, like, like a cup final. Uh-huh. Because it was just the atmosphere was unreal. Like, the fans were just, they were worse than ever <laughs> in regards to how much they hated each other. Edo, welcome to a very special edition of the No Choftes podcast. We've almost been doing this for close to seven months now, officially. I've been doing them on my own before, but obviously Roy got involved, but we're seven months in. Uh, it's the eve of Omonia's Champions League qualifying game against uh, Dinamo Zaga. It's going to be an interesting one. I'd like to thank everyone for watching last night's show with Valeria Zudas, former Hydric Split assistant coach, came on to tell us a bit about Dinamo Zagreb and what to expect from them. And obviously, our new signing. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's see how it goes. But you know what? Let's just put this all to one side because we've got a very special guest with us. He is a former... IL player. Now, we've had players from different clubs joining us in the past. We had uh, Andre Orlandi, who obviously played for Apoel and Anorthosi, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We've got <laughs> former IL striker Chris Dixon and championship winner, might I add. Hey, the Ingies, you all right? Hey, Ale, Ale, Ale. What's going on? What's going on? You good? Yeah, man. Great to have you on. It's been a while. I'll tell you what, Giza. It's been, I'm not going to lie, I've been doing podcasts for close to 10 years, and it's been nine years since I've been trying to get you on a podcast. You probably, don't rem- you probably don't remember this, but when you were at IL, I was messaging you on Twitter through the Shoot the Defence uh, podcast. Uh, uh, I think that's my okay, one. Okay, yeah? okay, 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 yeah. And then we were talking about possibly having you on the podcast, and then you effed off to China, and then you went off the planet because you weren't even allowed <laughs> to use no social media. I think you were going to use, use a phone. We were literally, <laughs> I, I was trying to keep up on Instagram, and there was like, Twitter was locked off. I think they don't like they don't they don't like Facebook over there. So I was just like, raw. Like literally, anyone that had me what the WhatsApp was. That was about it. Scary man, it's scary. But yeah. I tell you, before we talk about China, I, I want to talk about obviously your route to Cyprus because you was at Charlton before you went to now Salamina, and then you spent I think about a year, if not half a year or something along those. Lines. You weren't there for a long time, but then yeah. you went to Isle. So tell me, how did the move from Charlton? So now Salamina happened because you're looking at a, a Premier League club at the time or a Championship club, if I'm not mistaken. Championship, yeah. Championship, yeah. So basically, um, Charlton was in the, actually just got relegated to League One. And obviously my deal was up um, and they weren't going to renew it. Um, and I had a few options in UK, but um, I was on, lo- whilst I was at Charlton, I was on loan at Bristol Rovers. Um, and there was a assistant manager there, Lenny Lawrence. Oh, vet in the game, vet in the game. Salute to Lenny. Yeah. Um, and Lenny Lenny knew my agent at the time, Safe Ruby. So Lenny Lenny messaged Safe and said, Look, I'm looking for a striker for a Cypriot club. Um, do you reckon Dick will be interested? And Safe put it to me. And at first, I was like, Cyprus, like, okay. And then I spoke to a few people about it, and I was like, Bro, what Cyprus? Hot, I and I park, where I'm at, I and I park, because I've never been. Never been, never been Cyprus before. So it was just it was a case of I don't know what you were talk, talking about. They're like, ah, nah, for bro, whoever's gonna be banging, where yeah, make it up. And I was like, okay. So and to be honest with you, I think I needed a change of scenery. More than anything, it was like, look, it's not really what happened for me in England in regards to the offers that are coming in. I don't really want to be playing in League One. I want I'd rather be in the Championship. And I just decided to jump, jump, jump to it. And I remember I was on the plane at one point, coming to coming to see Salamina. And Shrewsbury Town Manager calls me while I'm on the plane. And he just says to me, oh, look, we heard obviously your know, deal at Charlton's up. We know, you know, you're available. Um, why don't you have a, have a look, have a look at us? And I was like, Shrewsbury son. <laughs> Shrewsbury son. I literally you have a difficult one there. Difficult one. I yeah. mean, you know, it's real tight in it. But no, <laughs> I said to him, look, I said to him, all due respect, I'll, 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 I'm, going, I'm flying out Cyprus now to go and speak to a club. When I, when I get back, we'll have a chat and we'll see how it goes. But to be honest, as soon as I landed in Cyprus, literally the feel I got straight away, the, 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 the love and the, the welcoming I got from Salamina was was so good that I just said, look, I've got to run with it. And it, it turned out to be a, a good a good, a good um, adventure to start off with, yeah. So uh, you said before that you'd never been to Cyprus before. Now, this is going to sound really like stereotypical, but then you obviously got a lot of footballers that love to go to Cyprus. The house and garage scene was massive. You know, so so Crew, crew, uh, Martin Lana was out there, EZ, everyone else. And, you know, for you to say, I've ne- I'd never been to Cyprus before, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ. I mean, you're, you're what, 36 now, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. So yeah. there's 
So, uh, so you would have been, mind you, 1998 was really when it blew up. So you would have been 14. So I guess, <laughs> yeah. So all the all the old child players, sense, used, yeah. used, used, all the old child players used to tell me like, listen, like Cyprus is the place to go to. Like it's live, and I, I think at that time, because I turned pro late, I turned pro at 22. Mm. So I, I think my first my fa- my first main main holidays were like Malia. Cavos, right. um, Marbe- then, I, then I went to Charlton and I started getting shoots in Marbella and then it was literally, it was a case of, it was going to happen, it was just when was it going to happen, I was going to end up in Cyprus in some, one way or another, but it just happened to be through football. Okay, so you go to Salamina, what standard of football did you expect at the time? Because Listen, back in 2011, 2012, Cyprus football has evolved quite a bit. Evolved, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you've seen yourself. Um, but back then, you know, I was talking to friends and obviously we didn't have like the cable, cable TV channels that they do out there now. So it was mostly talking to relatives, friends, finding out what the standard of football was. And they say, oh, it's just like village football. And you, it's always being shot down. But the more you watch it, you do see a, a decent standard. And it's very competitive in terms of what happens on the pitch. Because they do get a few kicks every now and again, don't they? Definitely. I mean, for me, when obviously Salamina were in the second division at the time. And I, I knew that I was obviously capable of playing in the first division. But it was a case of getting the club up to the first division. And the standard of football in second division wasn't any different to maybe what conference football and you gotta remember I, I came from I came from non-league football so I was I was ready to adapt um I'm ready to I'm, re- I'm ready for the challenge so the standard of football didn't surprise me I didn't think it was anything daunting or anything like that and but I didn't think it was it was it was below par like how people have under un, underestimated it and undervalued it um and obviously we did well to get promoted and it wasn't easy to get promoted either I mean my first five games I didn't score and it scored my first five games and I thought I was gonna get kicked out the door and then obviously once the first one they went in, it just started rolling after that, rolling after that. And um, I think and then we ended up getting promoted. I think we came second in the league. So it shows you how challenging it was. And then we obviously got into the got into the first division. And then you start realizing the gulf between the two, similar to UK as well. The gulf between non-league and say championship is huge. It's huge. It's a big gulf. So I'm saying so I, I took on the challenge and I was ready, I was ready, ready for it. And but Obviously, when we got into the, into the first division, I was at Salamina for all, all of six months, and then I okay, knock it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And that was a, a bit of a transitional period for Ayala at the time, because I think Freddie, who was a striker at the time, left to join Omonia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so you've come in. It's it's a big club. It's a very big club. You know, the Tsirio is a is a well renowned stadium in Cyprus. Everyone knows the Tsirio. Uh, I think well, they're gonna they're gonna be um, they're building a new stadium for Ayala and Abolon now, so it should be ready yeah. for in the next couple of years. But Tsirio is is synonymous with with Cypriot football. So you've gone to Ayala after going to from Salamina. Salamina, let's be hundred percent honest. They don't have a huge fan base. Obviously, they've got the history coming from you know the, the north of Cyprus, being in 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 Larnaca and whatnot. Um, but in terms of going to to Ael, comparing them to the clubs that you've played for since and and before, what do you make of their stature, the fans, the the history of the club? Are, are they up there in terms of being one of the biggest clubs that you play for? And I don't just say yes because you used to be, you know, you're honest, <laughs> <laughs> but in all in all fairness, is, is that would you say that they're up there in terms of the clubs that you played for? In terms of stature, probably not. Probably not as big as a Charlton, for instance. So I'm saying when I signed Charlton, obviously Charlton were in the Premier League. So in terms of, of stature, not as big as not as big as a Charlton. But in terms of fan base, I've never experienced anything like it. Literally, the passion, whether it be Aiel, Apoel, Apollon, um, Ammonia, that the fan base in them in those clubs is incredible, and it, it, it and it swarms the whole the whole the whole island because literally they they're so passionate about football, they love their football and they love their team. And North is another one as well, and it just for me it 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 it's incomprehensible for me to think that people don't appreciate football everywhere because they do, and it, when you go to the various different countries, you realize how much how big the the, the sport of football is. And how massive fan bases are, and how important they are. It's been an, unbelie- unbe- an unbelievable time right now, where we, ha- where we had no fans in games, and it's like, what? What is football without fans? It's incredible. So for me, compare- comparing comparing IEL, I-, I would say they def- they were definitely for me up there in the- in the- in terms of the clubs that I played for. Maybe not in stature, but in in terms of passion and 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 dedication and desire and love for their club, <laughs> second to none. 
Yeah, and, and the Lemeshani, the people from Limbasol, they're, they're known to be quite, uh, what's the word? I wouldn't say divisive, <laughs> I say, but they're, they're quite aggressive when it comes to, to the football. You know, I've spoken to you know, former Ammonia players who have told me that you know, after Ammonia games, after a defeat, they've had rocks thrown at the bus. They've had... It's, it's, it's been mad. It was, it's been mad. And the funniest thing is that what, what I found is that they all know each other. <laughs> they're all friends. They all live in the same city. Yep. They yep. all know each other. So it's like, at the game, we ain't friends. And it's similar to what's on the pitch. On the pitch, we I got, you got to know players on the pitch, and then on the on the pitch, listen, we ain't friends. When we do after the game, cool, no problem. Let's go and have some soup, um, some soup flour. We go on, uh, for that day, no problem. But on the pitch, no chance. Like we ain't friends, and it's the same with stadiums. In the stadiums, one fan base here, one fan base there, and they're, and they're going at each other like like they're worst enemies. But after the game, it's like, oh yeah, I'll see you at work tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. what? Standard, mate. Standard. Well, look, um, you you've gone to Cyprus from from the UK, where I guess everything is more structured. And listen, I've heard stories, horror stories about <laughs> players not being paid on time in Cyprus, accommodation, yada yada yada. Um, I'm not saying that Salamina aren't a professional club in terms of the way that they mm -hmm. operate, but when you look at the difference between Ael and Salamina, did you see a, a bigger gulf? in professionalism and maybe how things are done? Um, I, I wouldn't say it was a massive goal. It wasn't a massive goal. I'd say there was a lot more people employed in places to, to take care of certain, to, say, to take care of certain things. So it wasn't a huge, huge goal in organization or anything like that. They all had the same plan. It's just a case of who's doing their job correctly and who's not. And that's why, that's all it, that's all it is. And obviously there's, and that's when you have a bigger club, there's more, more money, more money to be thrown, more people to employ and the, and, it, and, it, and the structure becomes easier. So I didn't see a massive golf like that, but I definitely did see, obviously a massive golf in maybe the amount of people in order, the amount of people employed in order to make it as professional as it could be. So what about the expectations then, Giza? Cause uh, you know, as we've mentioned, big club, uh, <laughs> You know, you've got Omonia and Aboel from Lefkosia. You've got Abolon yeah. and and, uh, and Ael. Obviously, Aris as well were floating around. And then you've got a few other clubs, Anorthosi, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of the level of expectancy for, for yourself to score goals, in terms of the fans, what they want from you guys, be it a championship, be it a, uh, a cup, everything in, in general, what was that like for you having come from the UK Obviously, spending that year, year and a bit in Cyprus, knowing what the fans are like, but going to a club where you're getting promoted, you're going a bit of a yo-yo club, really. But then to yeah. a club that you know is up there, what, what? How did you feel yourself? Um, I, I always set high standards for myself, so I, I knew that I'd have I had to hit the ground running. I had an amazing coach, um, Ayo, obviously, so and he he, he bedded me in very very slowly. Um, told me just to analyze how my teammates play. I remember I took us on the bench for a couple of games, and then literally it was one game in Syria against um, Ernest, and he said, "Look, this is your, this is the one we're going to put we're going to put you in." So, um, like I said, I set, I set high standards for myself, and I literally wanted to hit the ground running. I scored on my, on my, on my start, first start, and it was a case of just keep going, keep pushing. And I feel I feel like the energy within the stadium because of what was going on at the time. Obviously, I O was top of the league. So it was like it was a case of look, we're here, we've got to stay here. And if we don't, if we don't, if we drop from here, we're staying, we're at least staying in the top four. But my mindset was, and I think that was the mindset of, of a lot of people in the club. They said, look, we, we've got to make top four minimum. And I but my mindset was we're gonna win the league. Like I'm not coming here to start top and then drop any lower than this. So if I'm coming here, I want to win the league. And obviously, nobody actually thought we were actually gonna do it. I think everyone thought Apple was gonna come through. I think they had distraction at the time of the Champions League as well. Obviously, they were knocking people out round after round. They'd got Real Madrid or something at one point. I think they were just like, literally, it was a case of, if we're going to do it, now's the time to do it, of all times. Um, but, yeah, ex expectations were higher for myself, for myself, but I, didn't, I don't think there was that too much expectations. The expectations were higher for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the fans. I think they just wanted to get top four. Get in the top four and then cool. But then, obviously, as the games were going by and we're still top, it's like, hold on one second, we could do something special here. And obviously we ended up doing it. But but was there, do you think you, you had less pressure on yourself because you came midway through the season? If you'd have started the yeah. season there, yeah? Definitely. I think I, I, I think there was definitely less pressure on myself because I come through midway through the season and 
because the team were doing well without me. Obviously, Freddie leaving as well. Um, there was a space space there that I had to fill. But at the same time, it, it I didn't feel the pressure of, 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 of being having to fill someone's shoes. It was just a case of come and do what you've been doing at Salamina, but now you're working with a better, a better, I'd say better players. You're working with some better players here who who actually are aspiring to do something incredible. And I just jumped on board, it jumped on board and, and just and just knocked in a few goals and kept it going. So what would you say was your most difficult opponent playing while you were at IL at the time? Because obviously difficult season, you've gone on to win the league, but in that league campaign where you won, difficult opponents? Um, do you know what? The lower clubs were always yeah. difficult for me. The lower clubs were always difficult because it, it, the expectation is to, that we have to win. The clubs that we were on, on par with was were ones I looked forward to. So the Ammonias, the, the Apple Wells, the North Assist. I looked forward to those games because it's like it's, it's, the competition is there. They're going to want to score as much as we're going to want to score. They want to win as much as we want to win. The lower clubs, were, I think the uh, Miss, uh, there was there was uh, there were some clubs in there that I just thought, wow, we're, 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 how why are we struggling to break these teams down? Because yeah. they just set up blocks and they just said, look, you got to win, innit? We don't we don't have to win. So I think the lower clubs were the hardest harder clubs to beat. Um, but I mean, I always enjoyed playing against Ike as well. I love the club. I enjoyed playing against them. I think I always I always scored against them as well. So I was happy with that. <laughs> But they were a fairly new club. I think they were founded like 27 years ago, something this this Correct. week, something like that. So yeah. they're, they're a fairly new club. Um, but yeah, you're right. And the thing is, nothing has changed in that respect when you're talking about teams playing with a low block, because even even this season watching Omonia, um, you know, the teams that we struggled against were the teams like your Salaminas, your Ethnigos, your Baralim, yeah. the, the lower teams who effectively sit with two banks of four or two banks of five. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they, they just try and hit you on the counter attack, and, it, and it's up to you to break them down. But you know, you had, you had a very, very um talented side. You know, let's be 100% yeah. honest. It was okay. I know you said that you had the Abolon breathing down, uh, Abuel breathe, breathing down your neck, but it was effectively your money. We came second that season, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Uh, only three points behind you guys, but you know, you, you had a decent team. You had Bebe there, the Montero thing. Uh, who else? Who was it? The De, whole team. De, 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 De Grand, a Junior, Carlito, yes. I could name you the whole team, bro. Like yep. literally Edwin Wan, um, Bohu up front, Edmar, um, Dede Cafu. in the middle, Cafu was there as well, um, Nilsson. There was there, we had there was so many, we have so much variety. I think Enrique mm. even came back at one point. Silas was there as well. George Silas was there. So didn't you didn't you have a player so in from Chelsea on loan as well? He came next season. Give him this. Oh, okay. Uh, Cabby, okay. Cabby, Cabby, Cabby Giallo came in next. He came in the next season. Cabby. Right. But literally, we had so much variety, and it was literally like whoever plays, we know a job, mm. and there's, there's so, so much strength in depth. And I think the recruitment, recruitment. I think Rui Junior was a recruitment um, at the time. Had a recruitment at the time, and it was he. He did well to get the players on board. He was on the. Uh, I remember when January opened up, and he was on the phone to me like, "Listen, we got to get you down here." Like we looked around, we know what we, what, what we want, and we need you down here. So we had players in abundance, and obviously I used to go come in with Cafu all the time. And we used to just be and we used to say, well, "Hey, my friend, we're gonna do this in it <laughs> every every driving." But hey, whoever starts, it's the same energy. We had the same energy. We're all supporting each other. We all wanted to win, and obviously we had and obviously have an amazing captain in Mario Nicolau as well. So it was just that he was he was he, he was a driving force in our team and kept the unit together as well. So it was oh, unbelievable, unbelievable squad. So I presume that played a huge part in your adaptation to the island. Because obviously, as you said, you were at Salamina before, and I guess that you had a similar kind of uh, relationship with the players. But obviously, as, as a young lad going to a new country where, OK, I know English is effectively a second language out there, but yeah. there are loads of other factors that are completely different. I mean, you're from South London, if I'm... Are you, South, yeah? South East London, yeah. South East, so it's, it's, a, it's a completely different world. I'm from, you know, Edmonton way, so, you yeah. know, again, but I'm, I'm my parents are from Cyprus and I speak the language, so it's, it's easy for me to go out there and that. But you yourself, as you said, you'd never been to, to Cyprus before. Yeah. You're going out there on the plane. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? So what... Did, did your teammates help you out? Was it was it the manager? Was it someone there? When I first started, when I first went in there, um, <clears throat> the Cypriot players, Cypriot players were were unbelievable with me. And when I went to Salamina, especially when I went to Salamina first, start, start off with Cypriot players were unbelievable with me. They, they, I remember they just they just they took me in. 
And I think they took me in because they could see what I was doing. Even, even after bad games on the pitch, it was like, look, don't worry, next game is going to come, it's going to come, because they could see what I was doing in training as well. And obviously, and you've got to be, you've got to be understanding and be able to build it, build yourself into a culture or develop yourself in a culture and respect that culture as well. So obviously, when I first arrived, I came in Billy Big, Billy Big, Billy Big, Billy Big, Big, Big Time, saying, "Oh yeah, I want to bring my car over here." And they're like, "No, no, no, it doesn't work like that over here." You got to respect it because at the end of the day, if, if I want to act all flashy and whatnot and come and come coming from UK. That's not how it is over there. And that's what I love the most. I said I say to people all the time, Cyprus was the most humbling place that I could ever have been gone to. And it was a perfect time for me to go because I needed to be humbled from the, the, from the pressures of what the UK off, um, gives, gives to you. So for me, it was a case of when I went there, the Cypriot players fed me in nicely. Um, we changed managers really quickly. So we obviously getting a, getting a Cypriot, a British Cypriot um manager in, in Steve Constantine made it easier as well because someone I could relate to he understood what what I what I required I knew what he wanted and he obviously helped me out a lot um and then obviously smooth transitioning over to IEL was again culture shock because everyone majority of players in IEL spent, 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 um, spoke French or spoke Portuguese so again it's like okay cool but you could see the family unit amongst them and then literally you could see the Cypriot boys trying to learn Portuguese the Portuguese boys are trying to learn Cypriot it was it was a beautiful thing and it, and it helped because if you've got that family unit within the team, you don't want your brother to suffer. You don't want him to lose. You want to win with him. So, and and that, that's what it's all about. And what about the culture then? Because uh, you're from Ghana or your family are from Ghana. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I have a laugh with Ernest Asante, who's the uh, Omonia player. As you're probably, you, you may have heard of him. He's a guy that we signed last summer. And uh, he and I, we've we become really good mates. And I've got Ghanaian friends who are from South London. In fact, I think you know one of them. Uh, Enoch. I say Sapphire. Yeah, I used, yeah. I used to work with him. I used to work with him. I used to work with him. Right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to work with him. So you know, the the cultures are very, very similar. Very yeah. similar. So again, was that another uh, advantage? Because it, you're practically like, yeah. okay, it's very similar to what I'm used to. Huh? Yeah, because at the end of the day, you're not you're you're you're, you're surrounded by just people that are humble people. And at the end of the day, they all know why you're there. So I'm saying, if you're, you're if you're, just, you're walking down the road people see you they don't bother you they don't trouble you they know why you're there okay cool that's Dixon he plays football for, for Salamina IEL so they don't they don't bother you they don't trouble you so I'm saying you haven't got nothing I always say this to people you haven't got nothing no expectation to live up to outside of football it's only about football literally when you get on that pitch now we want now we want to see what you're why you're here and that's the expectation you've got to live up to but outside of football no pressures nothing it's relaxed I used to get I used to tell, I tell people I, people say you're living the dream I'm like yeah I probably was living the dream get up Go training, come home, have something to eat, go sleep, go go to the beach, go and chill, relax, ready for training the next day. And that was my life. And that was what my life. And literally, that's what, as a footballer um, playing abroad, that's as easy as you want it to be. No outside stresses, and no outside dramas. Everything's been taken care of, care of in necessary places. And so I can just predominantly focus on football. And that was all I did. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but let's not sugarcoat this. Yeah, I'm going to put Go you on, on the spot here, bruv, because, you know, racism is obviously a big thing at the moment. I mean, it always has been a big thing, excuse me, but it's more prevalent now because of social media and the, the awareness is there. Before, yeah, you would see it, you'd hear it, but it wouldn't be magnified so much as what it is now. Now, listen, mm-hmm. I know Cyprus. Yeah, I've been to games and I've seen it and I've heard it, right, which... My next question is, I'm sure you've heard it around. Do you get what I'm saying? The way that you must have been treated and your teammates. So, you know, it, it wasn't all perfect, was it? Let's be real. No. No, funnily enough, yeah, the first time we, I experienced an, um, racism in Cyprus, yeah, would have been um, against a North Assist. And what, at was, their stadium? It, at their stadium. Right, okay. At their stadium. So we drew 1-1. One, one, and I remember, I remember I was warming up. I was on the bench at the time and I was warming up. And I, and, I, and I thought, did I just hear what I thought I heard? Because people joke about and say, I'm over, I'm over, I'm over. But when, it, when you know it's coming from a, in, in a derogatory term and it's a, and it, then, then it's like, hold on, did I just hear what I heard? And I know yeah. that's not my fan, my fan base there either. That's, that's, that's their Norse's fans. So I experienced it at their, at their ground initially. Um, but then again, the biggest time I experienced it was when we in the Champions League qualifier against Serbia, against, uh, in Serbia against yeah, Barcelona yeah. Great. 
So yeah. we experienced it there. That's the first time it, it was like predominant, like it was bang in your face. There's no sugar coating. They are saying this. They know what they're doing. They know what they're saying. And because IEL was obviously a, fact, a massive factor and IEL was obviously the majority of black players, it was just like, wow, like this is what, we, this is what we're, 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 we're being succumbed to. But on the flip side of it, when we, when we won the game, they were applauding us at the end of the game, off the pitch. And it's like, hold on one second. Is this what we had to do to, res- to earn your respect? Listen, it ain't about football. It's about life. And, and, and if, if that's what I've got to do to earn your respect, I'd rather not have it. Because at the end of the day, you should be able to look me in my eye and see me as a human being before you see me, see me, see me as the colour of my skin. No, I, I agree, man. And the thing is, you know, you, you mentioned Serbia. We hear it a lot in Eastern Europe. And the thing is, because the British press... Now, obviously, in Cyprus, I don't know if it's... As I say, I don't know if it's as magnified or spoken about as much as obviously it is in the UK. Um, but obviously, there's a there's bad press in Eastern Europe about racism. But when you look at what's happening back home, like in the yeah. UK, it's just as bad, if not worse. Literally, literally, like like in 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 I think in most industries, there's there's definitely definitely racism, and and and, and it's it's not spoken of enough for me. Um, obviously, you can complain about what people are saying in Russia and what people are saying in Eastern Europe, whatever. But the bottom line is looking your own doorstep first and foremost. I'm saying because as you've seen in the Euros, you you got people booing 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 the players when they're going down on one knee and in one breath, and then the same players that are scoring goals who are, who are black players, you're 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 calling them you're calling them everything under the sun and every racist term under the sun. So it's like, really? And then obviously they go and miss the penalties and it's like, oh, suddenly here we go. We're, we're black again, yeah? We're not, we're not, we're not free lions anymore. We're not. And so it, you've got to address what's happening on your own doorstep before you start pointing the finger elsewhere. And, and yes, you can point the finger elsewhere and say, look, what's going on over there? But at the same time, address what's on, the, on your doorstep first and foremost. Oh, I agree. And I think we're, we're slowly, slowly moving towards a more positive side of things. Granted, there are... A lot of idiots, and uh, idiots is a word that I'm going to use quite loosely to describe these these so and sos. But you know, it, it surprised me this time last year when I saw people or footage of people in Cyprus um, attending Black Lives Matters um, protests out in Cyprus. Yeah. It wasn't a protest; it was more like a rally. This, and I'm like, yeah, you know, wow, like you know, you know. <sighs> No disrespect to the people out there, but you know the older generation. It's like you said. You know they, they use the word Mavro, and obviously some of them use it as a term of endearment. Some people use it as uh, derogatory, a, a, yeah. as derogatory term. The funny thing is, I was talking to um, Troy Townsend about this a few years ago when Arsenal signed Mavrobanos, this defender from from Greece, yeah. and a lot of Arsenal fans on on social media were calling him Mavro, and I'm like, guys. Okay, you 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 are calling that for short, but you don't know what it means. And right. Troy, Troy was like, yeah, because Troy's Troy's uh, son is, uh, Andres is half Andres. half Cypriot, yeah, yeah. So obviously, he knows the terms. He knows the, the and Troy was like, yeah, they're obviously not using it in a derogatory term, and they don't even know what Mavro means in in Cypriot or Greek. Do you know exactly. what I'm saying? But they're calling him it for short. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! So, like I said, I was surprised to see you know people attending like Black Lives Matter uh, rallies in, in Cyprus because. Obviously, racism is still rife out there. Yeah. But the younger generation are like, you know what? Fuck this. Let's let's just you know nip it in the bud now because we don't want to yeah. go down that route. And again, it's yeah. like credit credit to all of them. And as you said yourself, bruv, it's a small island. Everyone knows each other. Yeah. Exactly. So you have, you have a row with one person. Next thing you know, you find that you're related to them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's exactly. It's, it's just a case. It's just a case. Of, for me, it's a case of education and edu- education. And obviously, like you said, the older generation obviously have been brought up in a certain way, and the younger generation are doing them then their utmost to try and nullify it and say, look, this is this is not what it's about. So I'm saying, and credit, like it's a credit credit where it's, where, it's, where it's due that it's turning, it's turning, it's not turning quick enough. It won't turn quick enough. It won't happen in my lifetime. It probably won't happen, it happen in my child's lifetime. But hopefully, by the time he has children, it would have started to go full circle, and suddenly everyone understands that. Listen, this isn't about black and white. This is about human race. I'm saying it doesn't matter what color skin you are. Talking about pigmentation, like what you talk about, it's ridiculous with what what, what people are actually using as a derogatory term. The color of someone's skin, like really, mm. like come on, now. It's, it's just silly. Yeah, man. It's like you said before. When they're scoring goals, it, you know, color doesn't matter. But when they miss a penalty. It's like, you know, like, the, uh, the N-word was, um, 
was a uh, trending on Twitter the night that Can you imagine that? I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, unbelievable. It's, it's incredible, like, in, 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 incredible, incredible. And you think to yourself, like, what, what more do we need to do? So I'm saying, but it's education. It's all yeah. about education, it's educating the ignorant and making them the minority. Because at the moment, they're still the majority. There's a lot of people who 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 use derogatory term, racial terms and. And we need to we need to cancel them cancel them out and slowly and slowly but surely we will we'll slowly make them the minority. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Well, look, on to more positive things. And you know, as an Ammonia fan, I really should be using the word positive. But let's talk about that season. <laughs> you, you guys won the league then, right? You know, uh, as far as I remember, um, I think you guys only lost one game when you joined in the in the league, the actual league campaign before it went to the playoffs. Is that right? Where we beat you three 0 was that the only game you guys lost in the actual league campaign? We lo- you lost one before, but that's before you joined. So I think you only lost two, if I I'm think, not mistaken. I don't even remember if we lost when I was there. I swear I don't remember. When did you I join? Was it the end of January that you joined? End of Jan. End of, ah, like, really so end you, of Jan. you'd have missed that 3 no wallop. I think I missed, I missed that. I think I missed that. I think I missed that. I missed that. Because I remember, I think I was watching it. I'm thinking, wow, they're getting smoked. And I think uh, and I think that's all. Oh, was I watching it all playing at the same time? Because we beat someone five two, and that was my last right. game, and literally it was like I thought. I think Ammonia had just beaten Ayo, and it was like, whoa, this league's about to turn up, and that's when they came and got me. But right. I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we, I can't remember yes, losing again. Sure. I've been, been in the cup final. We lost the cup final to you. Yeah, well, we could talk about that one in a bit. So I've got some, <laughs> I've got some questions for you in that one, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think you only lost to Abo and us in the uh, in the playoffs. But um, was was it was there any doubt that you guys would win it? Because as I said, you guys were you, you said you said you hadn't lost the game in the league yeah. when you joined. So what was the points tally when you guys got into the playoffs? Because the playoffs can be a bit mm, iffy, up and down. Yeah. Mm. So I think we were we were I can't remember how far away we were, but we were. I, I don't I don't think we were overly far away. We, I think we might have been four or five points, mm. but it was just a case of we just knew we had to keep winning as much as we could and. If even we drew, make sure in, when you're in the playoffs, it's no problem if you draw with a team that's up there with you because they're, they're not gaining anything, you're not gaining anything. As long as whoever's in third place isn't really creeping up as well. But it wasn't, it was, I remember it was us and you guys and it was It was like, every, after every game, it, was, it wasn't It was even a case of what, what was the score over there. We didn't, we just knew that we just got to get our job done. Get our job done and no one can touch us. But it was a case of, but it was, it was never in a case of looking over your shoulder because like I said, we win, we win, we win the league. If we don't win, then, then we look over our shoulders and wonder what's going on. Well, to be honest, we had a very, very decent side. Um, you know, players like Marcatha was there, who we don't really mention him too much anymore for various reasons. Uh, Sofia and Shefa, <laughs> no Kaseke. We had a very, very good team, but, you know, you guys obviously got over the line and won the title. So, first of all, which game did you guys go into knowing that, right, we're going to win the title after after this game? Like, there must have been a specific game where you guys realised, right, this is it. It's, it's done. We're, we're champions. Drawing with Apple at home. Right, we okay. had Mont- we had, I think we had Montero sent off in within the first 20 minutes and we held on for dear life, literally held on for dear life. And I think we drew Applewell, drew Applewell and it was like, okay, cool. We've got two games now. We also win one of the two. Win one of the two and it's done. And I think it was a North assist and uh, it might have been you guys, maybe. Final game, yeah. Guys? I think, Final yeah, game, I think yeah. it was you guys. So it was literally win one, win one of those and won the league. So, but Apple World, drawing against Apple World, I remember we all thought, we can't believe Montero got sent off. We just walked, okay, here we go. Here, it, 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 They're going to do everything in their power to make sure we don't win this. But literally, as soon as we drew that game, I think we knew. We knew we'd done it. We'd done enough. At Lanaka at home was another one, was another big one because we didn't score till like the 82nd minute. Um, and that was that was a hard one because they were they were really good as well. They they, they played for some fantastic football. I think they had Laban, the guy called Laban, he was an uh, unbelievable player. But literally, we won that 2 0. And yeah, I think uh, during Rapid World, well, we knew you scored we, the we, first though, didn't you? Against against um Ayak, yeah, I've got the yeah. first game. Two in two in ten and minutes or something like that, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, literally my it was just like, whoa, how that was done, it we pulled it out of the bag. And then obviously Apple World, yeah. Drawing Apple World was definitely the one where it's like, yep, yeah, okay, we're over the line now. So what about beating Abolon then? City rivals, the, <sighs> the rivalry there. 
I, I personally didn't know how big the rivalry was. So coming into the stadium and I'm seeing flares, I'm seeing fireworks going off. I'm just like, whoa, this is huge. And I mean, we beat them like 3 1 or 3 0. I think twice we beat them. And, oh, no, was it 3 1? was the last one, yeah, when Nielsen got 3 1. Right. And I remember, I just remember looking, thinking, this is insane. It felt like it was at like a cup like, like a final uh-huh. because it was just the atmosphere was unreal. Like the fans were just, they were worse than ever <laughs> in regards to how much they hated each other. And you saw them sectioned off over there, us over here, and the noise. I'm thinking to myself, this is this is this is like a cup final, literally. And it's probably probably the most intense game I've probably been involved in. Um, obviously, being a derby, um, but also one of the most enjoyable ones because I remember we scored early doors, and then it was just like, okay, cool, here we go, let's roll, let's roll, let's keep roll, keep rolling. I remember the game was supposed to get was going to get abandoned at one point because yep. they threw a flare on the pitch. And then obviously a family it was going to hit somebody, and they were doing everything possible to obviously stop the game from being played played on because we were just running running over them. But incredible, incredible, incredible scenes, incredible um, feeling, incredible atmosphere. Our fans were incredible that night as well. And it, it, it's the, it's those games in Cyprus that you want to be playing in. Mm. Don't get me wrong; it's the difficult ones are like against the smaller teams where you know you've got to grind out a win. But the big games when you're playing against Apple World, Anorthosis, Ammonia, Apollon. You, Ike, those are the games you want to be involved in and, you want, and you're and you chomping at the bit to really get on that pitch. I can imagine, mate. And talk to me about the uh, the title celebrations and I've seen a few videos <laughs> on YouTube, <laughs> mate. You're, fam- you're famous in the John Cena celebration as well. Talk to me about all of that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the John Cena celebration has been with me since non-league. Since I was a Dulwich Hamlet or here from over there, I've always done this and it was always, it was always just a message. He came back defenders. last night. Did you see that? Did he, did he come back? Money in the night? bank, yeah. Money in the bank, I yeah. Did, I imagine that. I didn't even yeah. see. I need to see. I need to check it out. But <laughs> literally, um, it started from yeah, from when I was young, and it was a case of just letting defenders know like you you can't you can't touch what you can't see, um, and you can't see me. That was all it was, and I just kept on running with it, and it just came it just became natural every time I score. I'm just my hand goes up straight away. So that was that that was that, <laughs> and then obviously the title celebrations. I've never. I've never and probably never will experience anything like that. And everyone talks, he talks about home church and, and Wembley, and it's a different experience, a different, different, totally different experience. But the passion, the the love in, in the stadium, the 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 fact obviously when you look back on it now, you think to yourself, wow, the story itself, we hadn't won the league in 43 years. I think Man City, it was it coincided with Man City at the same time, they hadn't yeah. won it in 43 years. So it was so many different things, variations that were come that were getting thrown up, and it was just like, this is in, this is incredible. This is an incredible m- moment, and something that I, I take great pride in. Um, I'm, I'm I'm always I always say to people, once a lion, always a lion. Like I'm overly overly passionate about being be, be, being able to represent the IEL. Um, and yeah, that night, um, yeah, it'll go, it'll go down in history. It'll go down in history. It's gone down because it was absolutely incredible. Um, do you remember much about the actual night itself then? Because obviously footballers, you've got to remain a bit teetotal. Were you guys completely off the rails? Do you know what? Funny enough, I remember almost everything about that night. But the, okay. night we, the, the night we won it, we went out. Um, the night we won it, we went out because that, the celebration went until I think the next day or a couple of days right. after. Let me talk to you there. Where did you go? We went out somewhere in in, Lim- in Limassol. In Limassol, it wasn't Rumours yeah. nightclub, was it? A club basement? No, was it? no, no, no. no. <laughs> it you know about rumours, though, yeah. Ah, uh, if, if you if you've been to Limassol and you don't know about rumours, uh, <laughs> you ain't been to Limassol. You ain't been to yes. Limassol. Come on. So, but literally, um, it was I don't know, it was some club around the back somewhere. It was, like, it was I think probably, probably where the marina is now. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So it was around the back down there somewhere, but it was just like. At that night, we got, and that's where that all started from in regards to me getting on the mic. So I got on the mic that night and I was just singing along and naming the players. And then the, che- the, the president comes to me and says, Hey, when we do the, when we do the, fest- the fiesta, you need to do that. So I was like, All right, cool. And I totally, actually, totally forgot that, that, that they asked <laughs> me to. So when they put me on the stage, I was like, When they gave me the mic, I was like, What's going on here? And I literally, I no, listen, I, t- I kid you not, no one knows this. I literally freestyled the beginning of that when I was yeah, like, ladies, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And then I said something like, um, IO champions, 
um, Yellow Lions. I literally freestyled that off the top of my head. And then obviously it was a case of the music started. Bam, now I've got to name the players. And I'm telling you now, I was running, I was thinking, who have I got said? Who have I? I think if you look back on it, I didn't even say Bebe. And he was no, the one that scored the winning goal. Wow. He scored the winning, he scored the winning goal. And he's my, probably the most, closest person to me oh, now. Mate. I talk to Bebe like every every other week now. And literally it's like, I'm never thinking, did I say Bebe? And I said, everybody but Bebe. Oh, boy. But it was, but it was unbelievable. The actual fiesta itself was incredible. It was um un- unbelievable. It was just, yeah, it, it was full of emotion, full of emotion, full of um joy, happiness, everything that everything that comes with obviously winning winning a championship. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so you're in the final of the uh the Cypriot Cup. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Cool, in the you final go. of the Cypriot Cup, you're a goal down, and uh, <laughs> in the 34th minute, I think it might be in the 36th minute, someone here has a great chance to level things up and he puts his chance wide. You you do you uh, get sleepless nights over that one, or? Do you know what? I don't. Go remember it, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Liar! Remember it. I'm I not swear. having it. <laughs> I remember. I remember the forty yard banger that just went over the bar. I just yeah. or went just went the bar. But I actually don't remember it. I, all I remember is that Edwin got sent off. Yep. Early doors, and I was like, "Oh, ten men. We're gonna. We're, this is a madness." And oh, he's and obviously sent off that season. Oh, it's a red cars that season, man. Oh, oh, always, always. It was like, I almost felt like it was like they were just ta- trying to tally up against us because <laughs> I remember that final, Edwin got sent off, and I was like, these are can ball as well. Like, we're going to be in trouble. And I was thinking, oh, someone got taken by a scruffle the net. But I don't remember the chance. I honestly don't remember the chance. And I think, I think most people would have forgotten the chance because they were too busy still part of thinking about it, obviously winning the league and whatnot. But yeah, it was, it, it, I, wanted, I wanted a double. I badly wanted a double. I wanted to win everything. But that's my mentality. I want. I want. If I'm in a if I'm in a final or or or, or, it's, or it's, we're, we're challenging for a league title, I want to win it. I want. I'm not. I'm not here for second place. And obviously, we didn't get it that. We didn't get it that night. And I'm only deserved it because at the end of the day, they, they they did what they needed to do, and they and they got the, and they got the title. They got the cup. They got the cup. But to be fair, man, we we did get quite lucky. I think you had a shot from about 35, 40 yards, which the goalkeeper saved. That you guys hit the post as well in like the 86th minute. Um, we, we we rode our luck, but like I said, we had a very good team and, you know, a few of those had already won the title a couple of years earlier. So they had that yeah. winning mentality there and they won the cup as well the year before, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been the year before. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't um, a, a team that was unfamiliar with, with winning games. So that yeah. is what I can say about them. But, you know, for you guys not to win the, the, the double, it must have been... Uh, kicking the balls and and this season just gone IL were, were quite unlucky in the in the title charge but they fell off close to the end because of a few yeah. goalkeeping mistakes which I'm not going to go into um but you left to go to to China and you know as we were talking at the top of the show you know um I, I was talking to you through social media and then you disappeared to China yeah. how did how did that happen because you just you had a pretty decent season you're in I think it was 2013 if I'm not mistaken so you were in your Second season, is that right? So yeah, so I was in, I was in my second season. Right. Um, I'm gonna go on record as saying I never wanted to leave. Um, obviously, new manager came in, wanted to change things up. Quite a few of us left, um, from what I can remember. Um, but I never wanted to leave. I was quite happy where I was. Um, and 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 at the time, an agent called me and, and literally said, "There's a, there's something maybe in China that could that could go down." And I was I was like China. So you can imagine in England, I'm thinking about Cyprus. Okay, never been, but, and then someone throws China at me and I'm like, whoa, okay, this is even even more daunting. But one thing my dad always said to me when I was younger was, go and see the world. Travel as much as you can, whether it be through football, whether it be through life, go and see the world, go and travel, go and see, go and see what's out there. So, and luckily for me, football has given me the opportunity to do that. Um, I've been able to travel in so many different places, whether it be Champions League games or Europa League games or even pre-season. And for me, it was a case of, you know what, it's another challenge. Let's go, let's go out there and see what it's all about. Um, it didn't work out. Obviously, I got injured in the first game of the season. It started like a house on fire. I was slapping in goals in pre-season for fun. And then pre first game of the season, I think everyone had a mark on me and literally... I remember someone came through my ankle and that was it. Literally, it was it was the game that was the game was up. I tried to come back a few times, but my ankle was, was just needed needed to be rested and and it was there wasn't enough time to rest. I was a marquee signing. 
when they just said, look, we can't, we can't, we can't wait. We've got, we've got to get someone, get a replacement in. And that was it. It was a case of back, back home. Thank you, bags. Jesus. So you ended up at Dagenham and then you ended up back in Cyprus with a, um, newly, a newly formed FC Parfour mind. So. Newly formed. Now, what, what was that like? Because it was a brand new, everything, wasn't it? Literally brand new. Was, was Dubov the, uh, there? Um, what I'm saying, was it after? I think after. After, he so came yeah, after. He came after, yeah. yeah. He came so after, but... I'm not too familiar with the formation of this new buffer, to be honest. I haven't done my Googles, in all fairness. So, so we had play, we had a we had a combination of players that had come from different clubs that had played in the first division, at, as well as, as well as obviously, experience in the second division. Um, I I was in at home, twiddling my farm, thinking, oh gosh, that obviously it's not worked out at Dagenham. Where do I go now? Um, and as someone's always, someone said to me once upon a time, go where you love. And it was a case of look, Cyprus. This is this is where I love, and this is uh, some. And they they they. I hope they love me. So, um, Paphos came knocking, and and I, and, I, and it was a new. It was, again, it was a new project. It was something they wanted to build a team around me, um, and obviously I was I was I was I was up for it. And literally, I'm I, I'm experiencing promotion from the second division before, so. I knew what I could do in that, at, at, at that level. And a lot of people said to me, why are you coming back? You won the first division. Like you won the main main title here. Why would you go back and come? I said, listen, at the end of the day, I, I, you, sometimes you've got to take two steps backwards to go forward. And in the case of, look, I want to help this club. I, love, I like the project and, and see where it goes. And obviously since then, they've gone on to, to do even bigger things now. With, with I think new chairman has come in. They've got big players that have come and come and gone. Um, I think Jason Punch is still out there. A good friend of mine as well. So, he said he was like, he said, I think he said recently, why did you ever leave here? And I said, bro, don't worry, I'm trying to come back. I'm trying oh, to come mate. back. I'm trying to come back at some point. Even if I'm trying to come back and retire there like, and, and, and live live out there because I, I tell some people already, like all the time, they don't, you got to, life is for living. Yeah. And you've got to appreciate what your surroundings and, and, and Cyprus is such a beautiful country to go and do that. And 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 relax yourself and, and take and take mm. in what life is really all about. And it's not all like, always the hustle and bustle and the city life. It's not always about that. Yeah. So I'm saying sometimes like, look how many people are dying to go on holiday now. Dying to go on holiday now. So I'm saying because they want to go and see what's what, what they want to go and see the world. And and for me, it was a case of yeah, like Paphos was a new project. Definitely, let's go and try it out. And it worked. And it worked out. Mm. And do you know what? I, I, I'm a little bit pissed off with Punch because when I, I spoke to him back in the last season, <laughs> and uh, you know, he's saying, "Oh, I don't know what's going to happen with Buffer, this and that," and I was like, "Come to Armonia, bruv. Come on, like you know, you and Jordi Gomez in the middle of the park. You know, we'll win the title at Canter. You'll get, we'll get into the Champions League group stages, yeah. and then about what four or five weeks ago, it's announced that he signed a new contract at Buffer. I'm like, for fuck's sake, man! What? And then Matt what? Derbyshire, who's a good mate, he, yeah, he, he goes. He's gone, he gone? He's gone to Ike. He's gone to Ike Lundlaka. Yeah, but the thing is, he listen. He wanted to come back to Armonia. That that was that's the club that he loves. But obviously, for whatever reason, the, the chairman or Henning Berg didn't see him in the plans. And look, Dubs is a is a is a lovely bloke. And I said to him, whichever club you come to in Cyprus, apart from Upper World, the fans will have your blessing. You know, yeah. the other fans, the fans will love you regardless what. And, that, and I think that's the thing about Cyprus. Like when when fans get attached to a player. If they if they go to any club apart from a rival, they'll love yeah. them forever. But with yeah. us, for example, we've had players leave us. Like Ephraim has gone to went to Abuel, Christophe went to Anorthosi, and we, we were all right with Christophe going to Anorthosi until he turned around and he said, "Well, you know, I didn't really love Omonia." But you think, Rema, like we were the we were the fans that literally paid for your transfer fee to come mm-hmm. from Switzerland, yeah. you know. And you had Ephraim that went to Abuel who claimed it wasn't due to money, but it was. But when it's someone like Dubs, you could tell he wouldn't have gone to Abuel because yeah. he's got that relationship with him. And I think that's the thing about Cypriot supporters. Once they become emotionally invested with a player and they have that relationship with them, they will love them forever, regardless of, of where they go, so, yeah. apart from a rival, if that makes sense. Exactly. I mean, I've, the kind of things I've played for in, in Cyprus, and I played against Ayo as well, so it's like, but they just they 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 appreciate you for what you did when you were there. So I'm saying, as long as you don't sign, as long as I don't sign for Apollo, they're all right. There you go. <laughs> so, and that's and, and I don't think that's gonna happen. So it's like I, I understand, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so you went to Baralimni. Um, an interesting choice, mind. Uh, a club with 
I don't know, a, a questionable business, uh, what's the word, activity. And then after that, you went to another club with even more questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that, you know that, who the... That, that, <laughs> Come on, talk talk to me about Ermi Zaradipu, please. Um, yeah, because so yeah, Paralim me was um, the team that got promoted. Promoted, won, I think they won the league. And I, I got, when I when I was at Papos, um, and then I obviously contacted me and, and me and Papos didn't end on bad terms. We just didn't end on great terms in regards to there was still that money outstanding and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh. and I'm away, and I'm thinking, listen, that what's going on. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy about how that was handled. So apparently, we caught, contacted me. Um, obviously, obviously, I, I went there, and I didn't feel like I was being respected. If I'm being honest, at Paralimni, I felt like yes, a lot of management and the board, um, and I, I'll tell you, no, I'll tell you, a lot of the fans respected obviously what I'd done and who I was, but I felt like there was particular board members that weren't really. Um, handling me how I felt that I should be handled and I felt like you know what you know what I've done over here um, and it's not me trying to have a big ego or anything like that because there was a player there that was also done, done well I think is it Budimir um, and he's done he done okay in Cyprus but he hadn't done what I'd done and I, as far as I was concerned like there's no competition here he wasn't I don't think he was ever really fit if I'm honest and I just felt like you're not handling me how I'm how, how, how I'd like to be handled I think I even scored like a mad goal against um, Mia Salamina, um, and I was just fuming. And I could see you could see in my celebration. I wasn't. I was. I was fuming more in the case of this is what I'm capable of doing if you give me the respect and the respect that I, I, I deserve. So I'm saying that, and, and, and I feel like I've earned. But it was a case of um, the chairman of Ernest called me up. Um, he'd been, and he told me from for, for years, I've been trying to get you. And I knew this, kind of, everyone had always said to me, he wants you, he wants you, he wants you. So again, and he gave me the respect that I felt like I earned. Um, he told, he was very clear with me. He was direct to me, he called me directly on the phone or whenever, whenever he needed, needed me to come over or, or, or sort some stuff out. And um, it, it was a cool relationship. And I think he also had a very good relationship with Julian Gray. So Julian Gray was a very oh, big right. part to play. Okay. Julian Gray had a very big part to play in, in, in me moving to Hermes because his relationship with, with, with Fenieros was very, very good. Um, I don't know why it was good. I'm not sure how it was good. I don't even know how they got they, how they got along or whatnot. But I know because Julian was at Hermes for a little bit as well. That's what happened. So Julian was at Hermes for a bit, got a good relationship with him, and then came to Salamina, I believe. Um, and Julian was Julian said, look. If you're direct with him and you're honest with friendly others, it'll be the same with you. And literally, it was, it was, it was, I, I was happy. I was happy there. I just feel like there was a lot of people around him at the time when we, when the season ended, that didn't particularly want the best for the club and maybe wanted the best for their own pockets in regards right. to bringing in players, right, right, um, right. new, fresh faces and whatnot. So, I, I knew where this was going to end up heading um, and I knew my time was going to be up come the end of that contract and as much as obviously Fanieros was obviously the boss and he wanted obviously to take 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 control of everything he also wanted to listen to listen to people around him and obviously it, it, it ended how it ended and it was oh, listen I've got no grudges at all I've, uh, I, I still I'm still in contact with his son a lot on, it, on, on socials as well so it's just a case of some, everything comes to an end all good things come to an end, and it, and it, and it, and, it, and that was probably the end of my secret journey. And but although, I, as I will say, and I said the punch, listen, I'd love to come back. You know, what I mean, I would love to come back. <laughs> I'd love to come back. Well, you're at a good age, really. You could probably stay play in Cyprus for three or four years. In all fairness, I mean, I mean, I mean my legs are still going. Obviously, just won the FA Trophy with, with Hornchurch, yeah. so I keep that letting people know that. Obviously, as long as my legs can keep going, I'll carry on. I'll keep on playing. Brilliant. So, um. <sighs> <laughs> Another question about Fanero. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, he's not a person that you want to be on the wrong side of, is he? In all fairness. At all. And that's the one thing I was always on. The, I was always on the right side of him. I was always on the right side of him because he's definitely not a person you want to be on the wrong side of um, from what I've heard. From what I've heard. I've never experienced any bad energy, vibes, anything. I remember we welcomed me into his house when I was going to sign, sign the deal. 
and he's that. Would you want? How do you want? What, what, what would you like to eat? He used to ask me about what 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 what, 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 what I would like to eat before games and what's the best preparation for the players. And and, and we got on, we, it was fine. Everything with me and him was fine. I could never have a bad word to say about him at all. Literally, I remember going to his house and what car do you want to drive today? And I was like, uh, no, I'm all right, I'm all right. Went, take, the, take the Bentley, take the Bentley. I'm like, no, 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 it's really good, we're good, we're good. But he was, a, he, was re- he was really good with me. And I, mm. and I hope that I was able to repay, repay with, with, with my performance on the pitch. Mm. And uh, in Aradipo, did you, did you see the, the Andre's house by any chance? The big pink house? There's a big, there's a big massive house there, but I, I wasn't, I didn't know whose house, what whose house mm. it was. But I know the house we're talking well, about. Well, from from what I've been told, that uh, Katie Price decided to paint her house pink in Aradipo when she was married to uh, Peter Andre. Oh, don't know man. how true that is because I, I didn't yeah. see it myself. <laughs> but I just wanted to know it might be one of those fa- famous landmarks in Cyprus. Um, oh. But yeah, mate, listen, we've, we've been going on for an hour and I really appreciate your time. Uh, a couple of things before I let you go. First of all, do you have any messages for the IL supporters? Because it's a big season for them. There have been a few changes uh, personnel-wise, but, you know, they, they look strong. And, and uh, Dusan Kerkes, who I'm sure you, you heard or you know about, he's done, yeah. he's done a very good job for him so far. And last season, as I said, had it not been for a few defensive mistakes, goalkeeping mistakes, they, they would have been very, very close to winning the title. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm always keeping one ear, one ear to what's going on over there as well. Um, so definitely for the season, I, I wish them all the best of luck, as I would do every single year. Once a lion, always a lion. Um, and I, I hope, I hope to see them at the top of the league next season, and obviously pushing on. I think next season is actually our ten year anniversary, so I'm hoping to pop over at some point. Um, to, and obviously, a few, a few, a few, a few of the old players are talking about this as well, saying, look, we should go over, go back to Cyprus and all we'll have a reunion there. So we're hoping to obviously come over at some point if we're allowed to fly and whatnot. Um, and, but definitely you'll, be, you'll have my support from here anyway, because like I said, once a lion, always a lion. Okay, this guy's got the cheat to say all that stuff on my podcast. <laughs> 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 Lovely. And the next I will, question. I, I, I will, and I will say, listen, Congratulations to Ammonia as well. Oh, thank will, you very I, much. I can't not, not uh, listen, in the, the day, champions are champions. And I can't, and uh, congratulations to Ammonia. Obviously, fantastic club, massive history. And some, and, and listen, you've done the job. You've done, you've done the job. And that's the main thing. So I'm saying getting the job done. So congratulations to Ammonia as well. Oh, look at Mr. Mr. Diplomatic. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, the next question, which I'm pretty sure you, you're you kind of anticipating now, as I mentioned before, Ernest Asante, Ghanaian. He's done his ACL, he's, he's at home, he's recuperating. But he and I, we've been talking a lot about Jolof. And we've got two Nigerian <laughs> players now. Yeah, yeah go we've on. Got, we've got Shehu go who on. joined us at the beginning of the last season. And uh, uh, Atiem Wen's joined on loan from Dinamo Zagreb. And well, you know, I, I said to Ernest, I go, you've got two Nigerians here, man. What's, what's going on? Like, you know, when I interviewed Ernest back in the last season, I said to him, who makes a better Jolof? Uh, you know, you or Shehu? He goes, ah, forget Shehu, man. Forget him. And then... All of a sudden, Jolof Wars has started. You know, she hasn't said anything. He's kind of been quite like Stormzy, but I think you know he sent me a few laughing emojis. So I think he's so. What makes what makes Ghana and Jolof so much better than Nigerian, in your opinion? Okay, so the Ghanaian in me, yeah, is gonna say that Ghana and Jolof is just it just feels more authentic. Like it feels it tastes more uh, traditional. It tastes more traditional, so that's what that's what makes it better as a Ghanaian, yeah. But <laughs> ah, this is, they're gonna they're gonna kill me in Ghana. Really. <laughs> Choose your words. I, actually, yeah. I actually, I actually, I actually prefer Nigerian jello. No, <laughs> I actually prefer Nigerian jello. That's the maddest thing. Tere, I, listen, I, listen, Come on. I love. Listen, I, I'm a Ghanaian to, to the core. To the core. And my Ghana, Ghana people, we have got everything. We are, we listen, we are the best at everything. Everything out there, we are the best. However, I can't lie, the Nigerian job is nice. I, I've got a lot of Nigerian friends, innit? And I, I said, I, the first thing when I'm going to their house, they listen, you're making jello, right? Because they, their jello is nice. But obviously, listen, I'm gonna stay stay to my roots. I'm saying like my when my aunties and my aunt, my uncles are cooking, listen, it's gonna gel off one time, you know what I'm saying? But Nigerian gel off is I can't even lie, it's nice. It's nice. If you don't want that, if you don't want that authentic 
that traditional that any bass natty something something but it's what I'm saying I'm I'm brought up in England as well so obviously I'm used to that as well but I don't know I, for me yeah if you don't want that authenticness then yeah definitely go get Nigerian jello so I'm saying and it is nice but if you want that solid solid to the core roots authenticness traditional at Ghana jello all day that, that that kind of answer tells me that you would play for a ball on one day <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! Hell no! Hell no! <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant! Oh, crikey, mate! Well, look, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been a, uh, it's been absolutely brilliant, and hopefully we can do this again sometime. We we'll get a few uh, no other ex pros on and whatnot, and have a bit of a laugh. And yeah, it's, it's been great, and I appreciate your time. I know, obviously, we, we've been going for over what is it, an hour and ten minutes now, man. And yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you, really, no really appreciate any, it, brother. Anytime, anytime, nice anytime, anytime, bro. Well, look, have you got any socials you want to promote? Anything like that? Anything you want to mention? Ah, oh, so yeah. Go so on. before, go before, on. before, before we go, um, obviously, if everyone, anyone that knows me knows my social media is mrdicko.com on Twitter, Instagram, um, wherever else you can find it. Um, but of course, at the moment, obviously coming out, coming to the last stages of my career, um, I'm transitioning. Obviously, from I'm going to start my coaching badges this year. Um, but I've st- obviously set up my own personal training, personal training company called CAD PT. We're also at CAD, which is C-A-D underscore PT 84. 84. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and obviously, yeah, that's my social media, social media platform um, where we work on personal training, football training, as well as fight training with my partner, who's an ex-MMA fighter as well. So, we oh, I was about to ask you, it's Questy that you're doing it with. No, 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 no. It's not even Questy. It's my friend Davin. So right. my long-time friend from when I went up from when I was like eight, nine years of age. So literally with we started a personal training company. We obviously work in the football training as well as well. We do train Questy. Questy's trained one of our clients as well. Um, and we're trying to expand. So obviously, again, this is this is all part of the bigger picture. For me, I'm looking to bring CAD PT to Cyprus as well um, and take it as far as possible. Um, and literally, literally, we're waiting for people to come on board to follow CAD PT. Follow MrDicko.com, but follow CAD PT and book in with us. I'm saying because we work, on ki- we work with kids from the age of seven upwards. Um, train, we train adults, we train kids, pros, celebrities, professionals, we- semi-professionals, we- we- whichever, whichever. But for me, it's a case of just trying to expand the company and give back, give back with all the knowledge that these got, these got in in MMA fighting. And all the knowledge I've had in football, you can only give back and obviously hopefully make the next Chris Dixon or the next whoever, 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 it, whoever it may be. So I'm saying, so Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't mention him. It's all about yeah. Habib, mate. It's all about Habib. <laughs> oh, Habib, yes. The next Habib, the next Habib or the next, the next Chris Dixon, whichever it is. But we just want to obviously give back. So CAD PT is the place to be. Um, and obviously just keep, 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 keep posted because big things are going to be happening. Well, I wish you all the best with man. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's, Thank that's you absolutely very brilliant. much. Absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, do, do you still speak? Uh, remember a bit of Greek? Um, so bits and pieces, the bad words, of course. We well, can um, use them if you want. But obviously, the main one would be right now. I guess would be uh, Kalinikta. Right? Kalinikta, bravo. Ah, Edon. Good, good, Edon, bravo, good, good. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Right, brother. One more thing before I let you go. I promise this will be the last thing. Can you say? You, um, my name is Chris Dixon, and you're watching the No Choftes podcast. No problem. My name is Chris Dixon, and you are watching the No Choftes podcast. In one, in <laughs> one, this guy is a professional. Obelia, this guy is a professional. That was Chris Dixon. I know he played for IL. He played for the, the little kittens over there, but he won the title. He's got a product <laughs> lima, which is more than what a lot of unorthodoxy players can say at this moment in time, uh, Mr. Carl see? Lafferty. Right, let's go. <laughs> so that's it for our episode of the No Choftes podcast. As I said, like, subscribe, tell your nunas. Until next time, bamishilakamu.